Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about an unusual type of a planet that we discovered several years ago that has since not really been discovered anywhere else. We're going to be talking about what's known as a gas dwarf. Welcome to What The Mat. So this right here is a planet in a system known as Kepler-138. It's a very interesting planet because we haven't really discovered any other similar to it. Now in this particular system, we actually have two planets that seem to actually meet this uh, specification and what really makes it unique is that it is a gas planet but it's a gas dwarf. In other words, it's a planet that's very similar in size to Earth. But in terms of the actual mass, it's much lower than Earth. And so it creates this very interesting envelope of gas around it. Now, let's actually um, investigate it in a little bit more detail in Universe Sandbox first before we land on this planet and take a look at what the surface looks like. So the actual system kind of looks like this. Here is Kepler-138, um, a relatively average red dwarf. And it has three planets around it that we discovered back in 2014. But since then, we actually kind of reclassified them several times. Because for the most part, we don't really know much else about it other than what we've seen from the Kepler mission. So if I were to enable habitable zones here, you would see that none of these planets are actually in the habitable zone. As a matter of fact, they are all very, very close to the star, meaning that they're all going to be really hot. So we don't really expect them to be in any way um, friendly to human life. The planet that's right here in the middle, known as Koi 314b, uh, Koi stands for Kepler Object of Interest, um, is more massive than Earth. As a matter of fact, it's almost double the, the size or the mass of Earth. And it's about um, maybe 1.2 uh, two sizes of Earth, so it is quite comparable in size to our own planet. So this is kind of what Earth would look like if I were to uh, position it right next to this planet. So it's relatively similar in size, but more massive. Now this particular planet is not really that interesting though. We've seen quite a lot of these and so this is not why we're here. We're here for the other two planets. And the other two planets seem to be very different. So first of all, let's take a look at the farther one. In this case, it's known as Koi 314c. This planet is also um, relatively large in terms of the actual size. So it's about the same size or similar in size to the previous planet, but its mass is much lower. Its mass is about 64% the mass of Earth. And because of this, its density is also much uh, lower as well. Its density is about two and a half times lower than density on the planet Earth. And so it actually would not look like this at all. It would look more like this. A very interesting, very unusual world um, that's basically mostly atmosphere, not so much actual um, solid surface. The most uh, recent analysis of this planet from 2018 actually puts the density even lower at something like 1.36 um, with the actual mass and the actual radius a little bit different as well. So it might actually be as, as uh, massive as 1.17 masses of Earth with the radius being about 1.7 masses of Earth. So it could be a lot more massive, but the reason why it's so large is really the actual unusual uh, atmospheric layer that is probably present here. So in other words, this planet probably has a tremendously large atmosphere. So I'm going to try to see if I can add a huge, huge layer of atmosphere here just so that we can actually see it. Although it looks like the planet really heats up pretty quickly as soon as I start doing that. Uh, and that's due to the actual uh, effects of uh, greenhouse. So the greenhouse gases here, which are probably quite abundant on this planet, especially if it's mostly water, uh, would mean that this planet is a lot hotter 
than even the hottest planet in our solar system, which is Venus. So we don't really know if it looks like this, but it's quite possible that the temperatures here might be close to 500, 600 degrees Celsius, which makes it uh, definitely not habitable at all. But nevertheless, though, this is actually still not really the planet I came here for, because I really wanted to show you the smallest gas dwarf we've discovered so far, and that's the first planet uh, in the solar system from the star, Kepler-138b. Now, it actually is interesting because um, the name Kepler-138b uh, used to be applied to the other planet in the system, this one here. Now, here is why this is interesting. First of all, let me actually take Mars and place it right next to it. It's even smaller in size than Mars. In comparison to Earth, it's super tiny. Uh, and so the actual mass of this planet is currently um, around 5.4 mass masses of the moon, or basically about 6.6% the mass of Earth. Its radius, though, is a little bit larger, which means that its density is about uh, two to maybe three times smaller than um, density of Earth. This implies to us, simply because of the size itself, that this planet is definitely filled with a very large layer of atmosphere, very similar to what you saw in the space engine right here. So this is kind of what this planet actually looks like. And what's really interesting about it is that it's relatively tiny in size, a lot smaller than Earth, possibly even smaller, at least uh, the extraterrestrial part, uh, than Mars. And, um, basically even less massive than Mars as well. It basically has a very thick layer of atmosphere that we're going to go and land on right now uh, that is extremely unusual and definitely not something that we've seen anywhere else in, uh, in our own galaxy. We definitely don't have anything comparable in our own solar system. And so here, this huge layer of atmosphere is most likely created by nothing but water vapor. It's very unlikely that this is similar to other gas giants, for example, so it's definitely not helium. It's definitely not um, hydrogen because those gases would escape very quickly from this planet simply because it has very low uh, gravitational attraction. But having water vapor is very possible. So all of this, all of this huge, thick atmosphere is basically water vapor. Now, one thing we know about water vapor is that it is a very, very excellent greenhouse gas. And that also implies that if all of this is water vapor, the actual temperature of the planet is going to be ridiculously high, way, way higher than Venus. So here, if we go into the planetary uh, temperature and we give it a relatively thick atmosphere, let's say, possibly something closer to Venus, maybe a little bit more than Venus, you'll see that first of all, almost instantly everything starts to evaporate. Now this obviously implies that uh, this planet is probably losing a lot of mass and a lot of it is basically being evaporated into the outer star system. But at the same time, um, this also might mean that this planet used to be much bigger in mass and in size uh, millions of years ago. So in other words, in one of the main reasons why this planet is so poofy and basically is essentially a gas dwarf is because of the influence of the star on, uh, on this planet. So because of the proximity to the star and also because of the tremendous uh, amount of water vapor in the atmosphere, this planet is really hot. This in effect creates a very large atmosphere around it which then evaporates into the outer star system. So all in all, this also means that this planet might actually one day become really tiny and possibly kind of reach a balance where it doesn't actually decrease in size anymore, but it's going to be much, much smaller and possibly look a lot more like, for example, Mercury. Now, does this mean that Mercury may have been similar to this in the past? Well, actually, yes, it, it very likely was. And it's possible that Mercury might even had um, atmosphere and could have been very similar to this planet as well. So it could have been some sort of a gas dwarf in the past. Uh, so are we looking at something that was the history of Mercury? Well, very possible, but obviously it's just a speculation. And unfortunately, we don't really have any proof to actually say so just yet because we haven't really landed on Mercury to investigate its surface. 
But if one day we go onto Mercury, end up landing there and basically discover that somewhere on the surface we actually have all deposits of uh, what may have been atmospheric water. In that case, it means that this right here could have been what Mercury looked like in the past. Now, it's possible that we might discover more of these gas dwarfs um, in the future, but for now, unfortunately, I mean, this is actually the only one we've found that seems to be not just really, really tiny, but also very unusual, both in its composition, in its parameters, and most importantly, in its actual size. And well, anyway, that's kind of all I wanted to mention in this video, and hopefully now you know a little bit more about the system known as Kepler-138, and most importantly about its unusual gas dwarf, Kepler-138b. Now, the other object, Kepler-138d, is also kind of interesting, but we've actually seen quite a lot of similar objects, so it's not as unique. But this object, that's really, really small and has a tremendously thick atmosphere, is definitely something that we haven't really found anywhere else. Anyway, thank you for watching, do subscribe and click on that bell button so that you get notified when the new videos come out. Come back tomorrow, I'll see you guys tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.